What's up, y'all? This is Josh, aka Static Link, coming at you again for another video. I know it's been a minute. Uh, I think the last videos I uploaded to my page were a while ago, almost a year ago since the release of my album. Uh, so a lot has been up. I don't know if you guys know, I, I signed a deal with the music publisher, which has been awesome. So I've had a few placements in MTV and a lot of behind the scenes stuff, uh, as well as releasing uh, tracks here and there and if you've been following me and for any of you that have I, I really appreciate all your support but if you notice I've really changed my style back uh, to what I came up on which is kind of boom bap hip-hop lo-fi whatever you want to call it just straight hip-hop instrumentals very similar to like knowledge uh, Mad Lib uh, uh, Doom um, anything like that that's like Dilla for example huge influence to me anything that's kind of like boom bap hip-hop or what uh, is kind of being called lo-fi hip-hop or you know the, the sample based sound uh, so uh, if you all don't know I also teach at Scratch Academy uh, in New York City and one of the things that a lot of my students would ask is where do you get your samples at or how do you chop samples um, where do you find them um, how do you chop up the ones you find you know uh, how does that work so I figured today what I would do is I would do a tutorial or kind of like just a video uh, showcasing how I make beats and I'll and I'll try to piece it together so it's not super long because uh, usually for me to put something together it takes uh, you know three four hours uh, to get something that I kind of like uh, groove in uh, so I'll kind of show you guys my process and how the sample is kind of like the background um, and uh, yeah, you guys can tell me, uh, leave me feedback, tell me what you think. Uh, would love to know your thoughts. If you if you like these videos, if you want me to do more, uh, so I hope you all enjoy. It. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is the site that I get my stuff from. So recently, I, I joined the site Tracklib. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have, have seen it out there, uh, but this site is really really cool. Um, I really like that it has uh, kind of curated sounds. So, for example, you guys can see here East Coast Hip Hop. Um, and uh, the guys at Tracklib uh, were awesome and set me up with a VIP account. Um, and they gave me a few free credits uh, to show you guys today. Uh, so, I'm going to show you some of the ones that I found. So, I already went through and did all the digging. But, for example, using the site is awesome. You can go through, you can play the site or a song. So, you can hear like the sound. Uh, you can do like search by like genre, for example. You can do uh, uh, like soul. So you go in here, you can click blues, soul, uh, electronic, country, uh, jazz. Uh, you can search through all of them and it kind of gives you a lot. So it gives you the key, which is great. I'm going to explain that a little bit uh, later why I love that. Uh, the BPM, uh, the year was released. So if you're looking for like a mint more vintage sound, so that's more new school, that kind of thing, it's kind of cool to have that information. Uh, and then it's $1.99 for the track. Now here's the thing. So if you go to the record store, just a quick little music business uh, thing for you guys. Uh, if you if you go to the music uh, or the record store to buy a record and sample it, uh, there's two different things that you have going on there. Uh, so one, you have to actually clear the sample through the record label or uh, the person who owns the mechanical royalty or the master file. The other piece is the publishing, so you have to actually clear the file through, uh, or the, sorry, not the file, the record, the sound, uh, the, who, to the original copyright owner. So there's two different pieces. So sometimes what will happen when you go to clear sample is you'll get the, the record label, maybe you'll say yeah for a certain amount of money, and then the publisher may say no. And if that happens, you can't use that particular file. Uh, so those are the big, uh, uh, red, there are a lot of red tape that uh, artists run into when trying to clear samples and that's why like publishers and different things really don't like to work with artists who sample just because it can cause a lot of red tape and it can take money away from different people and you know, you, if you guys don't know with streaming, uh, you know, there's not a lot of money to go around per stream so it's kind of, you know, one of those things where uh, you want to make sure you all have everything in a row and it's easy for the publisher or the record label or the artist who you're shopping the beats to, whoever uh, can clear that particular sample because if not, it can cost you the placement um, and cost you a lot of time. All right. So one of the cool things that I like about uh, Tracklib is Tracklib actually uh, clears the samples for you. So you guys can see that it, it's the this is the cost to buy the track, and then it tells you how much the sample clearance is. So for example, for this particular one, it's fifty bucks. Uh, so um, it'll tell you all about it. You can click on licensing, and it tells you, you know, how much the license is and how much the splits are. So, for example, category C is fifty dollars to clear the particular sample, and then they get 
a particular piece of uh, the uh, percentage of the royalties that are paid out. Um, so this is really cool. Um, you know, it's one of those things uh, to where you can, um, you know, use the sample. A lot of these are kind of unknown artists that are in the similar vein of very famous artists. Uh, so, you know, you might find some uh, artists that sound like very similar to James Brown, for example. Uh, music that came on that era that was really popular, that those art, that group or that band or whatever maybe never caught on at that time. So I really personally like using this. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, cool sounds on here and you can kind of go through and, and play with these. Alright, so for example, uh, you guys can see that I went through and I picked out five uh, tr tracks here. Uh, so you guys can see um, one of the cool things about uh, uh, Tracklib is you can actually uh, download stems. So this particular track up in the market, I really liked it, but I didn't really like the drums in it. So I was able to download the individual sounds. So for example, I got like the piano. You guys will hear it. So it's like an electric piano, Fender Rhodes. I got the guitar. Really like that. It reminds me of some like... Uh, uh, UGK, another guitar, so kind of funky, and then I grabbed the full track to show you guys. Alright, so kind of cool, and then I have another uh, guitar here that I, I grabbed. So you see three guitars, piano, and then the master track. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out. I opened up Ableton. Yes, I'm still using Ableton 9. I haven't upgraded to 10 yet. Um, I'm going to soon, hopefully. I uh, just haven't really had time to sit down and do the entire download. Uh, but a lot of it runs very similar. There's some great updates in Ableton 10. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna use Ableton 9, or for this uh, video, I guess, I'm gonna use Ableton 9. Uh, so I'm going to assume that you guys know a lot about Ableton already. Um, you know, if you have questions about that, you go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Uh, but for, for this particular video, uh, I'm not really going to concentrate on the basics like warping and that kind of thing. So you guys will see me kind of fly through it, and I'll show you kind of how I chop those samples up. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in my samples. So I'm going to start with uh, one of the samples. Let's see. The full song. This one right here. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to this for a second. All right, so kind of cool, very soulful. Uh, it's got a slow tempo. I uh, see Ableton read it as almost 133, but I'm going to go to halftime that because the actual tempo is more or less closer to 67. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, or 66 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and go by that for right now. Now, before I even go through and I warp the track, what I like to do is instead of warping the whole thing, because I know I'm not going to use the entire file, what I really want to do is focus on just warping the parts that I want to use. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and select a few parts. So I'm going to go through this real quick and then I'll be right back. All right, so now I have a few samples that I went through and chopped. Obviously, this isn't everything, all right? So I just basically went through quick and got, uh, let's see, four pieces here that I'm going to work with, right? So I, I was more or less uh, looking at the bass line in the song. I really like it a lot. I think it sounds really soulful. Uh, so what I'm going to do for here is I'm going to chop this up a little bit and just show you, and then I'm going to go back and find some more samples. So uh, here I go. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to warp this first one, okay? So... Because I'm only using uh, these little two steps here, I'm going to go ahead and delete all these other warp markers here. So I'm just going to select, so click and hold and drag, and then tap delete. And I'm just going to focus on warping just these two sections. Okay, so we have this right here. We have this right here. This right here. And then this. All right. All right. I like those little voice chops. I think they sound really cool. All right, so 
basically what I like to do is I like to go through and I like to find snare sounds uh, that are pretty much open. All right, so for example, we got that one right there. All right. Okay, so basically like what I like to do is I like to go through and I like to find snare sounds. All right, so because I know the snares are consistent and they're going to be on the two and the four, and that kind of gives me the foundation for my beat. All right, so what I got here is I got uh, one snare sound, a little guitar hit. I really like that. So I'm going to put that on the two, and then I'm going to see if I can find another snare sound. So I got another one right there. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it on the four. Okay. All right, so let's see, let's see what I got so far. And then I kind of just copy and paste and start to feel things out. Okay, so we got... So we need to find a piece that goes in here. So I'm going to go back to my song. And I'm going to try to find something. All right, so you guys can see, I think I might have got something here. So I kind of just copy and pasted uh, this little bass stab a few times. Uh, this is kind of acting as a kick, so this little sound right here. And then I have it repeating here. So we kind of get this. Okay, so you see this one's still got a little sound, so I'm going to try to stretch it a little bit, get rid of that little pluck sound or little kick. Or maybe we keep that and that little voice sound only comes in at the end of every two bars. So if that's the case, I need to find something else here to kind of put in the end. All right, so I'm going to go back to my sample. You can see it's a lot of back and forth. So we got... Or one thing I really like to do, and I do this for some of my students, is we could even stretch this out to see how it sounds. That's the cool thing about Ableton, maybe have it kind of hold for a long period of time. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to set a warp marker right here so it keeps the integrity of the snare. And then kind of stretch this one out. Or maybe kind of move this over. Take this piece right here. I kind of like that. It sounds kind of cool. It sounds a little too choppy, right? So realistically, it's about adding in other drums because right now the drums, is, they sound so choppy because we're using the original drums from the song. You guys can see like a lot of people like to chop on the machine. Uh, a lot of people like to chop on other products or other equipment or programs or whatever. I really like chopping in Ableton. I'm a very visual person, so I like to be able to see the, the file I'm working with and kind of look at the sound waves and see what they look like. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I decided to cut it a little short, realized I was at 15 minutes. Uh, so in the next video or part two of this video, I'm going to show you guys how to add the snare drums in and kind of bring it all together. I hope you enjoyed this first video showing you how I kind of chop sh samples in Ableton and one of the sites that I use, Tracklib. Uh, if you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe link below. Um, and if you want me to do more, leave a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see. Tell me what I can improve. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for checking it out and uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace.